I mean, the reason for the mixed-use policy is, is the idea that um, the central activity zone is a, is a very um, you know, mixed-use area, and we don't want increases in commercial to overbalance that character and function, which is pretty unique in London. It's you know, very different to, for example, the City of London or Canary Wharf, etc. And so the residential is to keep that mix, because unlike some other parts of um, the CAZ in London, we do have a lot of um, shops, bars, entertainment uses. So it's not those sort of uses we're looking for. And the reason, I guess, that, that um, we haven't explicitly asked for community facilities to be provided on occasion instead of the residential is that there are alternative ways of getting those facilities um, from both commercial and um, housing increases, and, and we do pursue those. Well, if we hadn't have had the Marshall Street baths there, you wonder how you would have got leisure facilities in the West End. We, if it had been sold off or something, or if there had not been sufficient funding, something like this could go towards it. So we don't know future patterns. I just think it's too rigid. It doesn't mean that it has to be for leisure. It just should be a bit more flexible. So that it stands good, this policy, for a number of years once you adopt it, and it just seems much too rigid in its present format. OK, thank you. Do we know if the, it's just come up before, but do we know if the 400 square metres is any kind of um, deterrent or has any kind of particular effect on whether or not people do develop large or? I think it's just to, to enable um, small extensions to existing buildings to take place without that onus put on them and that, that extra burden which they wouldn't need. So, um, what's, what is 400 square metres? Is it about a, what sort of shop or something? I mean, they've, they've got an extra threshold, if you like, because it, with offices, the mixed-use policy kicks in at 200 square metres. So by 400, we're giving um, those sort of uses the scope to, you know, add additional facilities without, you know, triggering the mixed-use policy. And we thought that was a reasonable amount. Um, I, was, I was trying to ask my colleague what sort of size, sort of shop space, what that is, so you could visualise it. But maybe someone out there could sort of give us an example of a 400 square metre space. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but do public lavatories come into any planning gains of this kind if um, they were required in the area as an alternative? They're, they're question number 12. <laughs> I said that, but I thought I yeah. did here while we were on the subject of planning gains on mixed use facilities. Ab absolutely, yeah, certainly. Um, um, as a matter of interest, on your uh, equivalent floor space, do you worry whether it's one 60 foot square luxury flat uh, for one person, one family, or four smaller affordable units? In other words, do you worry about the density of what the floor space will be used for in, cre in terms of increasing the housing stock? Um, it's, it would be treated like any other housing application. So if we thought that it was reasonable to provide one very you know, large luxury unit, um, yes, it would get planning permission, just like if they'd come in for that size unit anywhere else. If, if, we're, you know, if we think it's um, not suitable in that area or not meeting our housing mix policy, then we would say so. so it, just, it, it would just have to um, comply with our normal housing mix policies. Okay, if there's no more questions on... Oh, sorry. Um, I mean, the question that comes up time and time again is affordable housing. And what's being said is, is it affordable to certain people? And what, what's being put forward is, could the word social housing be included in your policy rather than, and, and, you know, um, affordable and social are completely different. So I don't know if there's scope for that. I think we deal with it in an entirely different yeah. area of policy and okay. we, we wouldn't want to confuse the two because there's all sorts of triggers and definitions and things accompany affordable housing um, and also that are controlled by national and regional legislation and, and policy as well. So, yeah, <laughs> thank you.